All right, it's six o'clock and I call the meeting to order. We're gonna pause for a moment of silent reflection. Can you just release really the pledge? Please to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, justice for all. We are going to start with an approval of minutes from the prior meeting. This would include the May minutes as well as the June minutes. Those are all in the Google Drive. I trust that everybody's had time to review those. Any questions, comments, concerns, corrections on those? If no questions, comments, concerns, or corrections, I will entertain a motion to approve the May and June minutes. We'll Can we do motion. those all together? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second for approval of the May and June minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, first thing tonight, we, we're going to deviate typically from what we typically do. Um, we have a public comment from Tim and Rebecca McClinic. Rebecca. Rebecca. Okay. <laughs> Rebecca. Come on up, Rebecca. <laughs> Thank you for giving us some of your time tonight. We'll try and make it quick. We want to give a public thank you to a few town employees. Um, a little background information. We love history. We live on Broadway and it's a very historic part of town. We have had a um, horse ring in our curb ever since my husband can remember, and he's lived there over 50 years. You know it's old. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but. Um, but you did. <laughs> um, so um, a couple of weeks ago, we put out some um, tree limbs, garden rubbish, and the town graciously takes that away. We really appreciate that. That was done on a Thursday. On Friday, my husband noticed that our curb was disturbed and the horse ring was gone and we were heartbroken and we uh, my husband uh, contacted someone at the town and left left a voicemail text message and didn't hear back and um flash forward to saturday morning hot humid we decided we go to the where the limbs were kept out on Fall Creek Drive, um, that might not have really been allowed, but um, we, still we still went. We still went. We did our best. We thought we found the area, no horse ring. And just a side note, there was a dead possum in the area. And so the aroma was <laughs> pretty bad, but we were drenched. We said, okay, defeat. We, you know, we admit defeat. Went through Sunday. Monday morning, my husband said, let me go up to the town hall and see if I can get a hold of someone. So um, he was put in touch with Hannah, who graciously said, let me look into it, take care of it. Okay. And then that afternoon, around three o'clock, Cookie showed up on our front porch and said, hi, here you go. And I was like, oh my gosh. We had a horse ring back and we were just thrilled. So we, and we would bring it, have brought it here today, but it is back solidly in our curb. <laughs> <laughs> My husband made sure of that. Um, we're all ready for our August porch party. We're mm -hmm. going to be one of the ones on the porch party. Um, we really are looking forward to that, but we would like to especially thank Hannah for getting the her horse ring back and thanking Cookie and the street, de and the street department, whoever, to go out and find our horse ring. So thank you very much. We are really appreciative of the town employees 
and the work they went into that. We really appreciate that. And we thank you so much. Thank you for recognizing them. We send your gratitude to Cookie and the Street. Thank you. Please do. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. So thank you. Bye. Nice. I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, next on the agenda, clerk treasurer's report. Um, we're going to make a motion. Well, not make a motion, but review the claims for the months of May and June. Okay. I think you've all got copies of these. Uh, you probably noticed that uh, uh, June's a little higher. We have a, a several payments for bonds and loans. And Things that are due twice a month, so we pay those July 1st and January 1st, and that added to it, got it to a little over $3 million for last month. Uh, on to the general fund for May, it reads uh, 1,152,983, a uh, little bit of difference in this month for June. It ends with $1,570,803. So, very good shape. Any questions? Any questions for Willie? So, how's that compared to the last couple of years? Very good, Scott. It's uh, well, like for this example, it went from eight fifty one and twenty one to a million three and twenty two to a million five and twenty three. So. And that has absolutely nothing to do with me. Uh, Scott and his group do a very good job, and we all work together. <laughs> yeah. But no, we do. We work together, and we try to do it as cheap as possible and save the town money. So works out great. So we're out. Yep. Any questions for Willie? Steve, do you have any questions for Willie? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, great. Um, if no questions, comments, I will entertain a motion for approval of the claims for the months of May and June, as well as the clerk treasurer's report. I'll make a motion to approve the claims and the clerk treasurer's report. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second for the approval. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried unanimously. Right. On to department reports. Lucas, you're up first. Uh, obviously, we have June Jamboree, a uh, couple minor issues, nothing too crazy, uh, nothing that wasn't uh, able to be handled. Uh, we were able to get all of our officers qualified on our new uh, duty handguns, and uh, everybody seemed very happy, myself included. I'm extremely happy. We're still waiting on our red dot optics to come in. Uh, I've been in communication with our sales rep, trying to determine that, but they've also got a sales rep for those. So uh, once we get those in, we'll have to go back out to the range and requalify again, but the, the new firearms are awesome. Uh, we were able to issue out four of our six new FOSTEC uh, rifles to officers. We ran into a few issues with them uh, when we were out on the range because that was our first time having the opportunity to fire them. Uh, the thing that's nice about FOSTEC, where we purchased them from, is they're out of Seymour, Indiana. Uh, I sent an email off uh, the next morning after attempting to qualify with those. Uh, I got a phone call back from, uh, I believe he is the owner. Uh, and he drove up that morning, picked up the rifle, picked up four of the six rifles. The other two were with officers. They brought those back the very next day. And with him, he brought their uh, lead gunsmith and they were able to tune up the other two rifles. So all the rifles are great. We'll still have to issue out two of the new ones, but that's just getting a range today. And we'll probably double up and do those when we get those new optics for the handguns as well. Uh, we swore in two new reserve officers. Uh, Andrew Brown and Parker Lorch. So uh, you will see them out in the cars right now. They're doing mainly like a plain clothes observation phase, and it's going to take time to get them into uniform, get them trained, and actually have them out working. So they are with another officer anytime right now. But that brings our total to three reserve officers. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. I assume the judge is not on no, Zoom. Not. Okay. All right. Then, and Aaron is not here. Uh, planning department, Anna, you're up. Oh. So, so I know, so late. I know. 
also I should make note in your drive is the fire department or fire territory report also. But you're good to hear those. Okay. Um, so you have our uh, monthly building permit summary in front of you. If you have any questions on that, just let me know. Um, I have a few uh, exciting projects uh, that we've completed. So the Historic Preservation Commission did vote in and adopt their updated design guidelines. We've been working on this for about a year now. Um, and we finally got it to, to where it needs to be. Um, another thing is we closed out two more facade grant projects. So those are the 108 to 116 North Pendleton. Um, that's the black and white A.B. Taylor building and then the gray side of watch building next to it. Um, you'll have some amendments to the UDO and some rezones tonight. We'll get into those when the ordinance comes up. We had a site plan um, get a approval. It's the Indy Boat Company that's on County Road 700. That was on the 7th of this month. And they have already pulled their building permit with it, so they're ready to go. Um, Let's see. And then uh, our community for, uh, development coordinator, we hired Carrie Craig. He's here. This is his first town council meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to have him on the team. We're looking forward to working on some really wonderful projects. Uh, speaking of which, we, we did get a grant from South Madison Community Foundation to rehab the final mural on our sidewalk here. Um, so that's going to be Carrie's first grant to be full administer on. So we're really, really excited for that. Uh, that's all I have. Is there any questions for the planning department? Questions for anyone? Nope. I just want to make a comment. I, I love the idea of the grants. I think we need to take advantage of all the grants we can get our hands on. It's Absolutely. a small town. Great job. Great yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're excited. Carrie's excited. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Every day I go upstairs and check on Carrie, make sure he's still loving the life upstairs at Town Hall. <laughs> Welcome, Carrie. We're happy to have you. Scott, you want to give town manager's report? Um, so uh, first thing on there is Elm Street, the Pelton Avenue drainage project. We finally uh, have that under design, assigned the contract. Um, there's been some updates. I can't remember if last time I told you that that drain there was discovered that there has been some collapses. They cameraed it just before, um, maybe a month ago. Um, so we're going to have to modify. Uh, we modified the design and the, therefore the design contract to reflect that. Um, so we also threw. Um, uh, Lisa Floyd's group we received a grant for community furniture. I don't even know what to call it, park furniture, street furniture in the depot parking lot. And it is going to be benches and tables that are you take out seasonally. So when the winter hits, we'll take it out. Also, when we redo the parking lot, we'll be able to take the, the benches and table off. And then also there is a shade, triangles uh, shaped shade tarps that uh, go up on posts and um, so we're excited about that which is good because we've had to delay that project for a while so we're going to go ahead and, and enhance it a little bit while we wait for the, the funds to uh, carry that project forward the water rate study is complete we're going to talk about that tonight um, and then that uh, next in line is they'll start the, the electric rate study and then um, Craig is on board obviously Hannah and I didn't coordinate his Job title says coordinator, so great. Make sure we coordinate and we don't say the same thing. <laughs> Highlights uh, street department. Um, if you notice in the downtown area in the quadrant here, they've been um, fixing signs, taking down old signs, painting the curbs with a little bit brighter yellow than the last time. And, it, and uh, with the flowers that have come in, um, with Lisa Floyd's group again, uh, it just looks wonderful downtown. And it was uh, Ricky's idea to concentrate on one section of town and just do get everything uh, spippy. And it's been a wonderful, and I, I tell you what, the, when you come downtown, sometimes you just look at it, it's just so pretty right now. Um, uh, we got a lot of good comments from Buzz and his group while they are doing the uh, race study, uh, the support from uh, Tracy and the building department, uh, better than most towns, right? Absolutely. Very good. Absolutely. 
Um, water departments had some major hydrant repairs that they've dove into and got them fixed very quickly. Those are not things that are easy to do. And then part of um, getting ready the depot parking lot, they also just finished some pressure washing out there. And then mm -hmm. the hats off to the electric department. They've responded to some uh, auto accidents with uh, lines down very quickly and uh, took care of the situation. So that's off to them, and that's all I have. Do you have pictures of the furniture for the depot? We will. We will. It's not up yet. Does it follow like the dark, like iron and stuff? I have know? not personally seen it yet. Okay. Um, so, but we met. Wednesday was it on Monday. site with Lee, Monday with Lisa Monday. Yeah. and uh, Ricky to get ready for the put the things in, in place so that we can put that in. Good deal. All right. The first matter of old business for tonight is Ordinance 2315, amending the speed limit on East Street around the Pendleton Fall Creek Park area. Um, again, we covered this last month. It will reduce the speed limit to 20 miles per hour on the stretch adjacent to the soccer fields along East Street. Any further discussion or questions regarding this? If not, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll make a motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second for approval of 2315, amending the speed limit on East Street around Pendleton Fall Park, Park area. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried unanimously. Okay, Jeff, do I open the public hearing and then let them do their presentation, or do I let them do the presentation? Open the public hearing, the presentation okay. will be part of the public, public hearing. hearing. Okay, that's what I thought. And then, Madam President, we says, uh, Councilman Dennis, hearing your public hearing for the ultimate presentation. Oh, so you need to go all the way back? No, no, I, th I think we're fine. Okay. We're going forward. Okay. All right, well, then at this point, I would like to open the public hearing on the water rate study. And the following ordinance of 2319. Um, we have representatives here from OW Cronin Associates who are kind of kind of walk us through um, the highs and lows of this water rate study. So turn it over to you guys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I know we, we went through this at the special meeting last month. We went through it last night with the uh, rate advisory board and utility board and uh, um, are there, just by show of hands, are there people from the public that are here specifically for the public hearing on the water rate ordinance? If not, I would, we could do sort of an abbreviated presentation tonight that'd be great. if that's okay. Uh, and just to sort of set the stage, the current water rates have been in place since 2004. So we've been 19 years under the same, same water rates, which is, great that you've been able to, to do that, but uh, what we're trying to do with uh, the utility studies now is that there's been relatively significant subsidies of the utilities, and particularly the water utility with the outstanding bonds from 2015, that you know, we're still going to keep that subsidy in place, but we're trying to square everything else up with regards to how the wages, salaries, employee costs are all allocated to get the utilities to pay their own way and going forward. And I think all of that is in place in our projections for the next three to five years. Uh, the uh, obviously uh, going 19 years and just compounding a 3% inflation factor, you know, you're up in the 75, 80% range we're looking at about half of that in terms of this first step to uh, to shore up all the operating costs, basically, and provide some costs for uh, capital projects going forward. But we're going to leave the, the bond payments with the uh, TIF, the Redevelopment Commission pledge of their TIF funds for the time being. And uh, with that, I'm going to let uh, Granite just kind of summarize the revenue requirements. And then we've got a, a nice chart that compares all those, uh, where you stand with other communities, because you're still very, very competitive. You're starting with a very low number. <laughs> and sometimes percentages can seem sensational when you're 
benchmarking off of a very low number, but uh, you'll, you'll see that you're still very competitive with other communities. And, uh, Brandon, I'll let you uh, thank a lot. You may want to slide forward to the, towards the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I'm at all yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The next slide here. This was yeah, the pro forma. So this is the the pro forma revenue requirements. So from the rate study, this essentially sums up our findings. So what we've got here is um, that that first area at the top. We've got your pro forma revenue requirements. So what we're showing here is your project projected expenses moving forward. So we're comparing test year then option one. So the difference between option one and two, option two is not on the screen here, but option two was in um, the rate study. So that would have included those, those TIF bonds where the water utility is paying that principal and interest yearly instead of TIF. So we're not going the, the whole step really. What, what Buzz was insinuating was option one, what we're showing here is really just to cover your operating expenses and to provide an allowance for improvements, capital projects and working capital. So on the, the slide here, we're, we're showing $1,390,430 of operating expense. And then the, the additional $300,000 below that goes towards the other um, line items that I mentioned. So that comes in at $1,690,430. So that's the amount that has to be made up through your rates. So next below that, we'll look at your pro forma revenue. So we're looking at the revenues from 2022, and then we've made some adjustments to those revenues based on some of our assumptions. Um, so that first line below adjustments, you have your additional revenues from eliminated rate blocks. Um, what we did here was we consolidated some of your rate blocks. Um, the reason being is those low rate blocks um, at next 50,000 over 80,000 gallons, you were actually selling water to customers cheaper than it costs you to actually produce a thousand gallons of water. So by eliminating those rate blocks that helps keep the margins better for the water utility. Um, we've eliminated private hydrant charges. And um, the reason being with the hydrant charges going away, it was a yearly charge of about $450 for private hydrants. That's going away, but it is also being replaced by a monthly charge that is passed on to all of your customers. So that 140, $143,000, that is recouped by all of your customers on a monthly charge, which is based on meter size and equivalent dwelling unit ratio. So a, a, a 5 8 inch user wouldn't have to pay as much as um, someone with a larger meter. The two inch meters are the largest meters. Um, that Pendleton has currently in the system. Utility receipts tax, that dollar amount, $17,501, that goes away because last year the rates were reduced. Um, the this, this state required that all water utilities have to reduce their rates by 1.4% because the tax went away. So um, we've made an adjustment for that. And then we have some other non-recurring revenues uh, below that, but where you see the revenue shortfall of about $375,000. That would essentially be the difference between the revenues and then the expenses that need to be made up. So that $375,000 would be made up through the rate increase to get you where you can cover your operating expenses and provides that $300,000 allowance um, for working capital. So that comes in at about 37%. And um, like Buzz said, it's been... 19 years since those rates have been changed. Typically, we would recommend assessing your rates every three to four years. So, you know, you've been able to keep the rates low for quite some time, but um, I think a lot of that is, is because, um, you know, the water utility wasn't really standing on its own. It had a lot of subsidy from the general fund, especially that, that TIF. Um, payment each year. I mean, that's that's an additional three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars that really could be on the water utility. But but right now, what we're recommending is to, you know, maybe work towards that in the future. But right now, we're really just covering your operating expenses and then providing an allowance for working capital. So, if you want to move on to the next slide here, we've got some rate comparisons. 
Um, this first one here shows a, a typical resident. So we're looking at monthly usage and then current column where they, those rates are now and then option one. So this is based on um, your usage. So most, most of your customers are gonna be in that three to, three to 5,000 gallon range. So that would be the change uh, from 2004 to then now. So over 19 years, your minimum customer is only receiving an $8 a month increase. Um, everywhere we're seeing, in all of our lives, we're seeing everything increase, especially since the COVID pandemic. So I, I think that you know, for what we're showing today, it's very reasonable um, from a you take into consideration, you know, where you've been and, and where you're planning to go. Um, we want to move on just to the last slide here. I think um, we, can, we can summarize it with this. Um, this is a, a chart that compares Pendleton to other communities. So option two, the $51.16, that's not what is happening today, but that would be the rate if the water utility was paying for those TIP bonds. Mm -hmm. So what we're showing here, $39.96 for 4,000 gallons. 4,000 gallons is the benchmark that the state uses to compare with other communities. So that's why we've used 4,000 gallons here. And we're comparing that to other communities around the state of Indiana. So you can see where Pendleton was right at about $30 for 4,000 gallons. Now we're, we're showing about $40 for 4,000 gallons. So you can see some, some other communities in there that um, you know, some are coming in lower, some are coming in higher. Uh, a lot, 20, anything, any 4,000 gallon rate that starts at $20, and in our experience, that's really low. And, and it's kind of a, everyone's really on the same page here where it's it's a catching up game where we've got communities on here that might have, might have they haven't changed their rates in quite some time. And it's kind of a, a cycle where everyone catches up and then there's a lot of other, um, factors that determine you know, communities' rates, but um, every community is different. And um, the fact that Pendleton has been able to subsidize their water utility with some of those town funds has kept those rates low. But I think moving forward, um, it's best practice for the utilities to be able to stand on their own. So that's- I just pointed out that the, these are the water usage charges. There still is gonna be that $5 public uh, Hydrant Burn capacity. Yeah. capacity. It's always been called hydrant rental, but it's really compensating the utility for the capacity that's built into the distribution system to provide fire flow capability. And $5 is a very modest charge. We're seeing a, a lot of communities have already made that shift. And, and the, the reason they do that is that the general funds have very limited resources. You're, you're limited by the tax caps, you're limited by what the state DLGF allows, you're limited by what the county tax board allows for local income tax. And uh, there's just too many demands on the general fund to keep pace with, with the fire, fire protection. This uh, option has been available since the early this water company was the first one to make its case in the, in the legislature expanded that to all water utilities. Just want to make that point. Yeah, great. Any questions for guys from Crawl? Scott, is there anything you'd like to add to this? I know you just a couple of things. So the fact that we haven't gone 19, we've gone 19 years without a rate decrease. Uh, best, best practice is to not go that long because then it's, it's, it may feel like it's sometimes increased. But if you look um, to get to where we are now, there were on one of those slides, it was 80 some odd cents only per year increase. So if we would have increased our rates 80 cents over the last 19 years, this is what it is. So this is very, very practical in that sense. And then, I think that's important um, that uh, Marissa brings up a lot is so what's what's it mean for you know 
somebody else like fixed income. So could you go back to one slide where he talks about what's the mm -hmm. what's another three thousand? One more. There you go. Yeah. Uh, our, Forward the, one. Down one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the three thousand <laughs> beyond this, right? This Correct. One. That's the so that's only he took that eight dollars and sixty-four cent change to buy by the night. It ends up being thirteen dollars a month with the five dollar yeah. That's a forty-two percent increase in the It's a thirty 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 seven well plus the five dollars. So, so it's forty-two. Mm -hmm. Yep. But what would it have been if we it would have done inflation at three percent? Seventy-five or seventy-five or seventy-six percent. So it would have been a lot higher than we're about half of that. What if, if we eliminated all the, the tip subsidy? We were right. 76, or almost 77 percent. Yeah, so we would have been, if you could go back to the last chart, had we just done a inflation, keep up with inflation, that's the 75 percent would have put us, what, another right at $50 probably? Yeah, close to option two. Yeah, right. Okay, so option two, so around fifty dollars. That's that's not a bad rate for community your size either, really, but get the avoid the rate shock of making that big step all at once. You know, discussion with the council and the rate advisory board decided to that uh, subsidy on the, the tip move. And I think that the other thing, that the other point is that the hydro fee, the way it was structured, um, the township residents were paying for that through their property tax, and now they won't be paying that through the top property tax. It's only the users that are paying the hydro fee, so that would drop off from the township. From the fire territory's budget is being territory. pulled out of their budget and spread across the consumer base. Right. Any questions from us up here for Crow? Anything, Scott, you want to add before I open it for public comment? Oh, yeah, is there anything from Steve? No, I'm good. Okay. Anybody with public comment from the audience? No, 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 it's okay. It's all right. We're pretty, inf we try to be somewhat formal, but we're somewhat informal too. So that's fine. Um, if no public feedback, then I close the public hearing and then call it for vote to the motion and a result. Of vote. I would just note that you got this in your folders that uh, last night the uh, utility rate advisory board did pass resolution 2023 20, 01, which recommended that this body adopt the ordinance that you introduced in your new special it has gone through an additional board and they came up with the same conclusion that uh, some of us did in our town manager track. That being said, do we have a motion for approval? I'll make a motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second for ordinance 2319, the water rate study. All in favor? Saying, oh, we have to. Sorry, Willie. Yep. Yeah, roll call. Sorry. Go for it, Willie. Shane Davis. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Motion carried unanimous. Okay, moving on to new business. Um, 2317, amending ordinance 20 11 fees from the registration of UTVs or ATVs, sorry. We remember last month's meeting, this came up during public comment uh, that we had this ordinance as well as the golf cart ordinance that needed some little bit of tweaks to make them current. Um, so this being 27, the 2317, which is amending the ordinance in 2011, um, this is just directing the registration fees 
to the Pendleton Police Donation Fund away from the Pendleton Law Enforcement Continuing Education Fund. And this was at the request of our chief, Mark Barr. So any questions regarding that? Okay. Lucas, is there anything, just because you're here, is there anything you'd like to add regarding this? Uh, I don't have really anything on it. Okay. Pretty much Great. So that's what this ordinance does is allows those funds that are drawn from registration of uh, non-traditional vehicles and golf carts to be deposited into the Pendleton Police Donation Fund instead of the Pendleton Law Enforcement Continuing Education Fund. So if there aren't any questions, I'll entertain a motion for approval. So moved. We have a motion. Jen, your second. Okay. We have a motion and a second for approval of 2317. Amending ordinance 20-11 fees from registration of ATVs. All in favor, oh, do we have to do roll call for this too? Yes, yes okay, Willie, roll call. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Steve Danny. Yes. Jane Davis. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. All right, 2318. Um, this is amending ordinance 2012. Essentially, this removes the seatbelt requirement and brings us in accordance with the Indiana state law regarding golf carts. So that, and this is also at the request of Chief Mark Parr. Anything to add to this one, Lucas? Okay. Nope. Okay. Any questions or discussion? I have a question on that. Does that include all age? So that would be younger children that would not have to have a seatbelt? My understanding of it is all, it's all or nothing. That, that's my understanding. Is that your understanding of it, Jeff? It is. Okay. Any other questions regarding this or discussion? I the way that I understood this, I guess to because I can read your face a little bit. <laughs> Having worked in public safety and pick people up and right. many times in the middle of the street, I tend to have a little problem with this. Yeah, I think that we're being guided by the state statute and evaluating it against that versus what we would like for the policy to be. Is that right? Yeah, and then plus there's also the whole uh, DOE safety uh, issue that the, there's not a lot of weight for a golf cart. There's a lot of weight and safety. Though. Safety bills are important. So, light vehicles like that, you're better off. It sounds counterintuitive, but you don't have to worry about the weight of the car. Accent tomorrow will statistically in low wage vehicles. Any other discussion for 2318? If not, I'll entertain a motion for approval of 2318. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second for 2318? Second. I'll second. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second for ordinance 2318. Willie, will you read, lead us on a roll call, please? Jerry Burmeister? No. Jennifer Roberts? Yes. Steve Danny? Yes. Shane Davis? Yes. Marissa Skaggs? Yes. Okay, moving. Oh. Do we need to suspend the rules? Is there a reason why we need to? Suspend Let's do it. Let's not when Mark is here and Mark can talk to us more about that. Okay. To 2320, amending the UDO. Uh, if you scroll to page three of four, you will see those amendments. And these received a favorable recommendation from Planning Commission last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, these are just. Um, Adding some definitions to 
video as well as uh, clarifying some uses in certain zones. Any questions for our planning director regarding these changes to the UDO? If not, I will entertain a motion for approval. So moved. We have a motion for approval of 2320 of the UDO. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for 2320 amending the UDO with the attachment as supplied. Willie, will you lead us in a roll call vote, please? Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Steve Danny. Yes. Jane Davis. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. And that counts as second read, right? Because Correct. the first read yeah, is a planning commission. commission. So those are officially adopted. Okay. Next up, 2321, amending the zoning for the Cole Carney property. Anna, would you like to talk to us about this a little bit? Sure. So in August of last year, um, the owner of this property petitioned for a rezone um, for general business, multifamily, and a light industrial that was STEM focused or advanced manufacturing focused. Um, they realized they needed to shift their zoning acreage designations around uh, to allow for appropriate lot sizes. Um, so that's all this is doing. They're not changing zoning designations, they're just changing how many acres are allotted to each one of those three. Any questions for Hannah Rose? Again, this also received a favorable recommendation from Planning Commission on July 5th. So if we don't have any questions or comments, I will entertain a motion for approval. So moved. We have a motion for approval. Do we have a second? <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second for approval of Ordinance 2321, amending the zoning for Cole Carney property. Lily, roll call. Steve Denny. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Shane Davis. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Okay, motion carried again. That's also second read on that. The first read happening at Planning Commission. Okay, 2322, amending the zoning for Blue Star Concrete. And the petitioner is here this evening they'd like to present. Hannah, do you have anything no, I, to say first before? Sure. Yeah, I can just kind of summarize it for you. Um, this is a roughly eight and a half acre parcel on County Road 700. Um, it's next door to the New York Show. Um, they are rezoning from rural residential to heavy industrial for a concrete dry mix plant. I'm saying that right. Okay. Dry mix plant. Um, they were given a favorable recommendation from Planning Commission with a list of commitments that they presented to them. Um, and Planning Commission was uh, satisfied with those lists of commitments. They are in here. So, if there's any questions, even for me or for Brian, I'm just the engineer for the project. I'm happy to answer any questions on that. If, if I may. Yeah. So, I think it's important to know that it's near the state road first. So it's all the way on the far end. Of the the second to last person. That type of thing starting to go in on the Ingalls property. It's also worth noting that this is not just a bird variety clean zoning change. There's, there are several commitments, you know, some ordinance in which they, the, the owner has committed to do those and they're they're extensive to protect the uh, neighboring properties. Any questions for Anna Rose, Scott, or the petitioner? Anything you'd like to add, petitioner? Uh, for the record, my name is Brian Lunch, Lunch Engineering. Uh, I'll get the opportunity to represent Blue Star Ready Mix. Uh, Blue Star Ready Mix is a family owned business. So it's not like it's a big corporation thing to come. Uh, this will be their fifth concrete batch plant. So they are well spraced in this. Uh, and they do tend to be good mix. Uh, we do see a need, obviously, with the development coming up down the 69 corridor. Uh, the rest of these mix to this. Uh, the State Road 13 I 69 area is a good suit for this. We think it's a good suit because it gives us great access to the State Road interstate system. That's in this area. 
Uh, and the minutes of it may shows how serious we are in protecting and developing a member of our community. Here. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion for approval of 2322 amending the zoning for Blue Star Concrete with the conditions as presented. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second for approval? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for approval of 2322 amending the zoning for Blue Star Concrete. Willie, would you like to leave this on a roll call vote? Shane Davis. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. <laughs> yes. Okay, motion carried. Okay, that's also second read on that. Planning Commission counts as the first. Ordinance 2323, amending salary ordinance. Scott, I'm going to turn it over to you for explanation <laughs> on this one. All right. So, um, unfortunately, we're using, losing Scott Needham, who's been wonderful. He's a contractor, um, as our IT. And um, so, I think we, over the horizon, we were looking at probably having to eventually have a full time town employee that's an IT director. Um, with Scott leaving, it became apparent that we probably needed to step up that timeline so that there could be an adequate turnover. Um, in addition to that um, and looking at how much we were paying for the contractor anyway. Um, and then the added pressure that is uh, growing more and more for cybersecurity. It's a big red flag, especially if for towns. Uh, you know, the county, for example, had, they were hacked a few, two years ago, 2016, 2016. Yeah. Saturday before the election. And you, and you, you remember getting the phone call, right? Yeah, Mr. County Attorney. And um, so so anyway, um, the one thing that they've made clear that if you, especially if you, if you have utilities is that the one variable that will keep your insurance rates down for cybersecurity is to have a full-time employee that is ID. So with all those things uh, coming about, it became clear that we needed to be so held it off a little bit longer. Just got to leave me down. Great. Any questions for Scott Resky about this? Comments, concerns? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve 2323 amending the salary ordinance. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Right, we have a motion and a second for 2323 amending the salary ordinance. Willie, will you lead us in a roll call? Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Jane Davis. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Scott, yep. do you want us to, we need to yeah, suspend right. it and get this right. going? Right. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules and have the second read tonight. We have a second. We have to show that we have unanimous consent to suspend the rules. So, Willie, will you lead us in a roll call for that, please? Shane Davis. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Mrs. Skaggs. Yes. Okay, we've suspended the rules. Now, do I have a motion for a second for an approval and second reading of 2323 amending the salary ordinance? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion in two seconds for approval of 2322 or 2323 amending salary ordinance. Roll call, Willie. Mrs. Skaggs. Yes. Shane Davis. Yes. Steve Danny. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Okay. Motion carried. If, if I oh. may, there's one thing I left out. So this, this salary is because it's so predominantly it has to do with utilities. I think my utility is at tax dollars. Great. 
Okay. Moving on to 2324, amending the speed limit on state road, old state road 132. Um, so this would change it from the overpass with I-69 and County Road 425 West, that would reduce it to 45 miles per hour. And then from 425 West to Main Street here in town, adjacent to the park, it would reduce it to 30 miles per hour. What is it now? <laughs> 50, 50, 55, yeah. yeah, cars coming into town around that curve that fly. Yeah, I, I can speak personal experience. That's a racetrack for a lot of people. Yes, yes. So, Especially with golf carts out. Yes. So I'll, I'll play this a little bit. Yeah. 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 Bikes and pedestrians and golf carts trying to go from Silverthorne into town through there. And we want to keep everybody safe as best we can. So, Mayland eventually put it in place. Like, well, like the, the sound. Mm -hmm. the rumble thing. The rumble strips. Yeah. yeah. Any questions or discussion regarding 2324? If not, I will entertain a motion for approval. I'll make a motion. Approval. We have a motion for approval of 2324, admitting the speed limit on Old State Road 132. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for amending the speed limit on State Road 132, Ordinance 2324. Willie, will you lead us in a roll call? Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Shane Davis. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. We can let that sit for a month we'll before we. It. I don't think we need to suspend on that. We don't have the signage or anything yet. So, My opinion is it's summertime, there's more and more people out. I think sooner. Get it done. Than, okay. Rather That's than good. later, would be my recommendation. The signs are on the way. They are. Okay. All right. Then I will entertain a motion for unanimous consent to suspend the rules. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second for suspending the rules to allow for second read. Willie, will you leave us in a roll call for that? Marissa Skaggs? Yes. Shane Davis? Yes. Steve Denny? Yes. Jennifer Roberts? Yes. Jerry Burmeister? Yes. Okay, we suspended the rules, so now I will entertain a motion for second read of 23 to 24, amending the speed limit on Old State Road 132. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for second read of 2324, amending the speed limit on Old State Road 132. Willie, roll call. Jerry? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Steve? Yes. Shane? Yes. Marissa? Yes. Are you getting tired of that? Yeah. <laughs> All those papers say I. <laughs> I feel like my mom is yelling at me. Marissa? <laughs> okay. I'm saying that sleep tonight. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Um, right before the meeting, Jeff received a draft of an agreement. Do I need unanimous consent to amend the agenda to include this, or can I just? No, simple majority vote can amend the agenda. Okay, we need to, or I would entertain a motion to amend the agenda to include the agreement for development, water extension, and annexation of real estate. Make motion. Okay, we have a motion to amend the agenda. Do we have a second to amend the agenda? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to amend the agenda to include this agreement. Willie, will you lead us in a roll call vote, please? Jane Davis. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Willie, I can take over. So, uh, we've, <laughs> so we've amended the agenda to include this draft agreement for development, water extension, and annexation of real estate. Scott, would you like to talk about this? Yes, so this is for um, Ag 101, the property off of 900 South, um, West of State Road Nelman. They are expanding their facilities, and so they need water. We have water very close to them. Obviously, the plant, our new water treatment plant is on the other side of nine, on 900 South. Um, and this corresponds with a long range plan with the water treatment plant. Right now, the water treatment plant only has one line going in, out. Um, 
which runs the problem of there's not redundancy. So if something did happen to that line as it first comes out, then the water treatment plant would be would be the operative until that comes back online. So there's always been an intent to to loop back with a second line, which is good engineering practice to have a loop to have redundancy coming out of your plant. And so if this we'll be able to kill two birds with one stone be able to supply some water to the growing customer on the edge of the town and then also you know, take a step forward as far as uh, safety of having this in place. Okay, so Jeff, explain to us what this is that we're actually approving. This is the preliminary agreement to allow Scott to enter into this plan. Right, that's substantially similar to, to this document. There's still uh, there were a couple of copies passed back and forth between Scott and myself and attorneys for 101. And I think we're there. We're on the certainly the inside the five yard line. Uh, but they wanted to look at it. I think we sent our last copy at four o'clock this afternoon. They wanted to look at it one more time rather than wait until the uh, August meeting for final approval so we can get started building the thing. Um, we'd ask that uh, you authorize uh, Mr. Bresky to execute an agreement and uh, negotiate an agreement such that the uh, agreement is substantially similar to what you have in front of you today. And if I, I'll obviously work with Scott on the legal side. And, he's got and then the other part of that is, so um, if that water project is completed, then they would like to voluntarily annex into the town space there. This doesn't necessarily start damaging. No, it doesn't. Right. Have to be, it's uh, probably a 2025. Any questions for Scott or Jeff? Comments, concerns, anything? Nope. Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion for approval of this preliminary contract for Scott to negotiate and execute. I'll make a motion. Okay, second. we have a motion and a second. Yeah. General Marshall second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Willie, roll call? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. You say do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you can. No, Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Jennifer Roberts. Yes. Marissa Skay. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Jane Davis. Yes. Does this just take one vote? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> Great. Okay, we have gone through all of the new business as stated. I will open it up for public comment. Any public comment from the audience? No. Oh, okay, we do have a Okay, come on up. My name's Alice McCrofflin. I live at the corner of 425 and 600. Um, trying to understand the planning and execution and desire to what's called chip seal 425 as opposed to asphalt repave. Yep. And, and what's the longer term plan? So um, we're adopting the best practice that the county has been using for a long time and also the state has uh, started doing it. In fact, they have done a chip seal pave, chip seal pave cycle. Uh, they've done it on State Road 36 and 38. What it does, it saves a lot of money. Uh, if you, I can get real nerdy on you. If you want me to go into engineering mode. I'm an engineer, so keep okay, going. Great. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So um, they found you know, through experimentation that if you inject a chip seal process um, with your uh, paving cycle, so instead of every five years paving a road, if you interject chip seal into that, it gives a longer life to the, to the road because that type of process builds in the micro pores and keeps water out better. And then so what's your old layer, surface layer eventually becomes the base, that it becomes stronger, lasts longer, 
And so they're, they're getting, some people claim almost 100% longer life. I would guesstimate, I would be happy if we're getting an extra 30% to 50% out of it. Um, we've also seen this um, with some roads very close to town where the county has started the chip seal cycle. And you compare the two, um, especially when the annexation happened, a lot of roads were paved at the same time. The roads that remained in the county, they did the chip seal cycle. The town did not. And those roads are doing a lot better. Yeah. Um, is Aren't those two roads town roads? 425 West and 6 yes. and 6M. Those are town roads. So yes. why did we pick that as a as as a it was it was working for a county road and then is there any other town road that has that no you get to be the first yeah because <laughs> um, mostly because of the extra heavy traffic that is going on because of the character and construction and as you know those famous interloper semis that keep bothering your yard <laughs> by driving through it um, they are starting to deteriorate that road at a faster cycle so we're going to beef up the paving cycle there because of that. Now, 600 South is going to be reconstructed because the construction of Perry Glen has been heavier and more frequent. And it's just, just destroying that road. Plus, they widen the road. So we need to resurface that as soon as they're done with construction at Perry Glen. But because of what's happening on 425, we're upping the cycle on that. Now, in the next paving cycle, you're going to see a significant number of uh, roads that, that we inherited from the county that are going to be chipped and sealed. So you got to be the first. Well, I, I think, I get, you know, I mean, proof, proof was is it, in the pudding. Yeah, you go yeah. out the State Road 38 and 36, they were just chipped and sealed a year ago, and you can't even tell that they were chipped and sealed. I will admit. It's a pain. It is a pain. When you first and it's do ugly. It, it's well, it, it is ugly at first. <laughs> but yeah. um, you know, there are some advantages to it. If you do just do a pave, uh, one of the things you see in concrete drives is they'll be marked up uh, with higher marks. With chip seal, you don't see that as much. Uh, so there are some disadvantages. I don't like uh, when you first drive over a chip seal either. You know, you're going to start to see it a lot more. Okay, so a couple of questions. One sure. is, you said more frequent uh, uh, treatment. Do we have a plan? Would it be like three years? Would it be? So to get the community Sign crossing grants, they require us to have an inventory. We drive, our team drives the road. It's usually me, my, uh, our street department, superintendent, and then somebody from the planning department. And we have to, to to be eligible for enhanced funds for our paving you have to give it a pacer rating which is developed out of wisconsin i've been using it since i was out of engineering school well even before i was in engineering school they're back say over 40 years ago so it's a proven right way of rating roads um, we turn that into the state every year and that gives us eligibility to um, <coughs> Uh, receive those funds so we go through and you have to redo it so you just can't rate your road you have to rate every road so every year you look at it again some roads in europe was one that was start, starting to show a faster deterioration than most of the roads that were inherited from the county uh, and is there uh a plan that has to be approved that before we did this on 425, was everybody aware of it? it would, did there have to be a vote? Was there a, a, any kind of agreement or, or uh, announcement or communication to anybody that we were gonna significantly change the service? Um, and did anybody have to buy off on it? Well, the state did. And they had to, we, we submitted the community crossing grant. It's clearly stated what what roads you're going to do and what type of maintenance you're going to do on it. And that would either be crack seal, chip and seal, resurfacing, or reconstruction. And this, and, and we just were the pilot? Road. No, I wouldn't say you're the pilot. You were the, you needed it more than anybody. Uh, 
like I said, you'll probably see it resurface faster also. In other words, instead of five, six years between resurfacing, you'll see that happen. Uh, you'll probably see that road resurface in probably three years. Be my guess. And every year, it just hopefully the chip and seal do their job and get some more life out. We, we got, I have two comments. One, they, uh, I live on 425 also. Uh, number one, they didn't do anything where it comes off the old lapel, like oh, the, the, yeah. the bad spots where, you, where the turn is. Yeah. Didn't do anything. And the consistency with, with which they laid the Chips is all the way from loose gravel to tar, and all you have to do is drive down the road, and you can you can see the tar spots already. I mean, there's just no there was no consistency in how much they put down at any one spot. You can see every place where they changed from one truck to another or one dump to another. I'll put so that inconsistency goes away with a little bit of time. It'll, it'll bake during the summer. That's why the science works on it, is that you put that down, especially during the hotter months, and that the, the sealant percolates into, um, uh, down into the old pavement. It's exactly what you do on a driveway when you seal it, but because the speeds are higher on a road than you would in your own driveway, I would hope, uh, they put the the chip down to make sure the road is not slick. If, if that wasn't an issue, that's what you would see. And then the, 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 the other thing that the, the chips do, which are really, they're small stone, if you don't know, um, is it does protect the tar from doing damage to cars and that sort of thing. Because at a higher speed on a road, it'll fling that tar, right? which is nothing anybody wants. The other thing does is that the stone either, uh, powderizes too over time and goes into and helps fill those microfibers and that's why you're enhancing the the, uh, the life of that road. Now the one thing where chip and seal does not work is any road that has a curb or it has uh, stormwater drain issues or stormwater inlets that stone the chip will get in there and it'll ruin your stormwater system. Um, so that doesn't work. It only really is, you're going to see it happen is when what we call street or sleet or sheet drainage, where the rain hits the road and, and goes off because the cr most roads are crowned, right? There's a little bit of crown to it. So the, the rain uh, runs off. If you have a curb that blocks the stone that runs off, then it'll cause problems with your, with your stone. So I, the I engine right on the curb, and the speed that they, which we passed it, the new ordinance for the speed limit uh, on, on the, the bike, uh, I'd like to see them enforce the speed limit on 425 a little better. But uh, uh, I live on the outside of that little curb, and my driveway is constantly getting getting this chip yeah up my driveway yeah yeah i totally agree that chip and seal when we first put it down it's it's a pain but look at like i said look at group is in voting look at state road 38 30 and 36 as you go out of town towards marketville you can't even tell if that was chip and seal i mean you're just it's it's the future in dot in dot who we who we basically turn our Paving plan into, they're they're pounding us to, to adopt this best practice. So the engineer is me. You should be happy that you were the first. I know you're not. I get it, but you were in the most need, probably because mostly of the traffic at your land that started to deteriorate that road faster. Any other public comment? What, what type of engineer? Are Oh, well, then you're at a higher <laughs> civil engineer's worth of bottom. 
or concrete and water. You get it. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> well, you know this. You know the higher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, back me up. I got a pair right here. Am I not right? See, there's an independent engineer, a civil engineer. Y'all go have dinner afterwards. All right. Any other public comment? Okay. If not, I will um, adjourn the meeting at 7 10 p.m. <laughs>